Have you ever wondered about the history of Russia, where this people come from, and where it all began? Sit down, relax, and let's delve into the subject. For millennia, the territories we now identify as Russia and Ukraine were home to nomadic tribes and enigmatic Bronze Age cultures. Their legacy survives primarily in the form of graves scattered across the vast southern steppes known as Kurgans. These people, referred to as Scythians by the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, buried their leaders beneath immense mounds. Their lands eventually fell to the same nomadic warriors who hastened the decline of the Roman Empire. Following this, the region was settled by Slavic peoples, who despite sharing language and culture, were divided into numerous tribes. Vikings from Scandinavia, known as Varangians in the east, navigated Russia's extensive rivers on bold raids and trading ventures. Legend has it that the East Slavs sought a Varangian leader named Rurik to be their prince and unite their tribes. Rurik accepted their proposal and established his capital at Novgorod. His dynasty, the Rurikids, would govern Russia for 700 years. His people, known as the Rus, bestowed their name upon the land. Rurik's successor, Oleg, seized control of Kiev, establishing it as the capital of a fledgling state known as Kievan Rus. A century later, Vladimir the Great, aiming for closer ties with the Byzantine Empire to the south, embraced their religion and converted to Orthodox Christianity. He is revered today for introducing Christianity to Ukraine and Russia. Yaroslav the Wise enacted laws and expanded territorial holdings, marking the golden age of Kievan Rus. It became one of the most advanced and influential states in Europe. However, following Yaroslav's death, internal conflicts among his sons led to the disintegration of Kievan Rus into feuding princedoms, just as a new threat emerged from the east. Under Genghis Khan, the Mongols had already conquered much of Asia. They launched a formidable raid across the Caucasus Mountains, defeating the Kievan princes at the Battle of the Khalkha River before withdrawing. Fourteen years later, the Mongols returned with a massive army led by Batu Khan, sweeping across the land. Cities that resisted faced destruction, while those that surrendered were spared. Novgorod, having submitted to the Mongols, was spared. Its prince, Alexander Nevsky, further defended the city by defeating the Teutonic Knights at the Battle of the Ice, fought atop a frozen lake. Alexander Nevsky remains one of Russia's most revered heroes. The Mongols established their rule as conquerors, creating the Golden Horde with its capital at Sarai. The Rus princes became vassals, compelled to pay tribute to avoid devastating reprisal raids. They referred to their oppressors as Tatars, enduring what became known as the Tatar yoke. Alexander Nevsky's son, Daniel, established the Grand Principality of Moscow, which flourished under the rule of the formidable Uzbek Khan. The Tatars eventually embraced Islam, emerging as a formidable force. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania dealt a significant blow to the Tatars at the Battle of Blue Waters, seizing control of Kiev. Eighteen years later, Dmitry Donskoy, Grand Prince of Moscow, achieved a decisive victory over the Tatars at the Battle of Kulikovo Field. Following internal strife, the Golden Horde fragmented into competing Kanuts. The fall of Constantinople, once the mighty capital of the Byzantine Empire, to the Turkish Ottoman Empire marked a significant shift in power. Some hailed Moscow as the Third Rome, the bastion of Orthodox Christianity after the fall of Rome in Constantinople. Meanwhile, the Grand Princes of Moscow expanded their influence, annexing Novgorod and laying the foundations of the first Russian state. At the Yugra River, Ivan III of Moscow confronted the Tatar army, compelling it to retreat. Russia had finally liberated itself from the Tatar yoke. Under Grand Prince Vasily III, Moscow continued to grow in strength and size. His son, Ivan IV, was crowned the first Tsar of Russia, earning a reputation as Ivan the Terrible. Ivan expanded Russian territory, conquering Tatar lands in Kazan and Astrakhan, but suffered defeats in the Livonian War against Sweden and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. His modernizing reforms gave way to a reign of terror and widespread executions, fueled by his violent paranoia, leaving Russia vulnerable. Despite Ivan's brutal rule, raiders from the Crimean Khanate managed to sack Moscow itself. However, Russian forces swiftly retaliated, routing the Tatars at Malady the following year. 
Cossacks inhabited the lawless open steppe between warring states, known for their horsemanship and often recruited as mercenaries by Russia and Poland. Ivan's own son, the Tsarevich, fell victim to his father's violent outbursts, symbolized by his bludgeoning to death with the royal scepter. Cossack adventurer Yermak Timofeyevich led the Russian conquest of Siberia, defeating Tatars and subjugating indigenous tribes, leading to the founding of Arkhangelsk, Russia's sole seaport linking it to Western Europe, albeit icebound in winter. Upon Ivan's death, his son Fyodor Gyar succeeded him but died childless, marking the end of the Rurikid dynasty. Ivan's advisor, Boris Godunov, ascended to the throne, but after his sudden demise, his widow and teenage son were brutally murdered, leading to an imposter claiming to be Ivan the Terrible's son seizing the throne, only to meet a similar fate shortly after. Russia plunged into chaos, known as the Time of Troubles, as rebels and foreign armies ravaged the land, leading to widespread famine and plague that decimated the population. Polish troops occupied Moscow, while Swedish forces seized Novgorod, pushing the Russian state to the brink of collapse. In 1612, amidst the anarchy of the time of troubles, Russia faced devastation from war, famine, and disease, resulting in the loss of up to a third of its population. Prince Pozowski and merchant Kuzma Minin rallied the Russian militia, liberating Moscow from the Polish garrison. Since 2005, this event has been commemorated annually on November 4th as Russian National Unity Day. Recognizing the need for unity, the Russian Assembly, the Zemsky Sabre, elected 16-year-old noble Mikhail Romanov as the next Tsar, marking the beginning of a dynasty that would rule Russia for the next 300 years. Tsar Mikhail prioritized peace, exchanging territory to secure much-needed breathing space for Russia. His son, Tsar Alexei, implemented the Sudebnik, a legal code that transformed Russian peasants, comprising 80% of the population, into serfs, effectively rendering them as slaves with inherited status and limited freedoms. This system dominated rural life in Russia for the next two centuries. Patriarch Nikon of the Russian Orthodox Church introduced religious reforms that sparked a schism between reformers and old believers, a division that persists to this day. Ukrainian Cossacks, rebelling against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, sought Tsar Alexei's support in exchange for recognizing him as their overlord, leading to a 13-year war between Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Russia emerged victorious, reclaiming Smolensk and gaining control of eastern Ukraine. A rebellion led by renegade Cossack Stenkarazin brought anarchy to southern Russia, ultimately quelled by the Tsarist government. Razin was captured and executed in Moscow by cautery. Feodor III, despite his frail health, implemented significant reforms during his reign. He abolished Mesnichestvo, a system that granted government positions based on nobility rather than merit, and ceremonially burned ancient rank books. However, Feodor's reign was short-lived as he passed away at the young age of 19. Following Feodor's death, his sister Sophia assumed the role of princess regent, governing on behalf of her younger brothers, joint czars Ivan Fee and Peter Wang. After centuries of conflict, Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth signed a treaty of eternal peace. Russia also allied with the Holy League in its war against the Ottoman Empire. Sophia's rule witnessed the first treaty between Russia and China, establishing their mutual frontier. At the age of 17, Peter Svafers seized power from his half-sister, Sophia. He became the first Russian ruler to embark on foreign travel, undertaking a grand embassy tour of Europe to forge alliances for Russia's war against Turkey and to acquire knowledge in science and shipbuilding. The war against Turkey concluded successfully with the Treaty of Constantinople. Russia obtained Azov from Turkey's ally, the Crimean Khanate, securing a foothold on the Black Sea. Peter enacted numerous reforms with the aim of modernizing Russia into a European-style state. He mandated that Russian nobles adopt European attire and behavior, imposing a beard tax on those who refused to shave. Peter initiated significant reforms in Russia, including the establishment of the first Russian Navy, modernization of the army and government, 
and promotion of industry, trade, and education. During the Great Northern War, Russia, Poland, Lithuania, and Denmark challenged the dominant Baltic power, Sweden. Although Russia suffered an initial defeat at Narva, they later achieved victory at the Battle of Poltava, solidifying their position as the new dominant Baltic power. To symbolize Russia's growing influence, Peter oversaw the construction of a new capital, St. Petersburg, amidst coastal marshes. This remarkable achievement through costly and surf lives established the city as Russia's second largest. The Great Northern War concluded with the Treaty of Nystad, securing Russia's gains at Sweden's expense and further establishing its dominance in the region. Peter was posthumously declared Peter the Great, honored as the father of his country and emperor of all the Russias. Upon his death, he was succeeded by his wife, Catherine, and later by his grandson, Peter II, who succumbed to smallpox at the age of 14.